Hello! Welcome back to Level 1 News. Today is August 3rd and we're doing business and security news and this is going to be a very long episode. Probably mostly because of business. The business, there's a lot of, the quarters, is it the quarter? You could show some enthusiasm. We're not, we're not in a recession. That's 100% <laughs> the first thing you need to know. I have a video of Bill Clinton telling me that we are in fact in a recession, but the year's 2000. He's a known liar. Mm. Well, you know what? The thing that I got from this article is that EU Prime members have been paying a lot less than me. Until and now. And I don't like it. Amazon hikes Prime membership prices by up to 43% in Europe as inflation bites. Germany. Germany was one of the worst hit. I have a feeling there's a lot of people that are uh, exiting the German Prime membership. Bit, yeah, big moves here going up uh, 20 euro. Well, not quite 20. 20%. There's part of me that just wants to get rid of it because it takes so long to get things anyway. I still think I'll save money on the shipping. You think? I think so, yeah. If you were, if you wanted to be one of those people who's like, saves up all your Amazon purchases and buys them and gets that one day delivery to save all the shipping, you could probably do better with that. We usually do that anyway, so maybe it's worth it for us. But I like to just click. I'm just like, oh, one napkin, ship it. <laughs> I'll take that. Creating jobs. Mm. Here's the block of stories that I added. Yeah, this is Intel and uh, Intel. <laughs> they had their shareholder call. It was dark. Now, the weirdest thing to me is that we passed that CHIPS Act right before this happened. Yeah. Right before. It's almost like they knew that if they waited till after this, then people would be like, whoa, we're giving them money? <laughs> Should we be giving them money? Intel CFO says we're on the bottom after company misses earnings and stock sinks. So there was the, the earnings call. There was a lot of stuff revealed on that call, kind of rapid fire. Uh, I had the, the, there's a tweet from uh, the CEO, Pat Gelsinger. He's like, this quarter's results were below the standards we've set for the company and our share, shareholders. We must and will do better. We remain laser focused on our strategy and long-term opportunities we, as we embrace this challenging environment to accelerate our transformation. That's a lot of big words. That's a lot of words, soup, nothing. yeah. You know what long-term thing that they're not going to focus on? Intel Optane. Intel's winding down its Optane memory business. 3D exploit storage is dead. And this sucks because this was actually really good technology. It was amazing. You could have persistent memory or you could have insanely fast storage devices. And I think the storage device was more appealing to the everyman, but they're just going to get, they've got all kinds of stuff that's just sitting unproduced and they're just going to destroy it all. They took a $700 million write off or something crazy like that. It was like a $454 million loss for the quarter. It was just really bad. Another thing that they revealed on that call was Sapphire Rapids. This is an older article in the Intel Platinum 8480 Sapphire Rapids 56 core CPU benchmarks leak out 35% faster than Ice Lake. But. It's not coming. They're respinning the silicon. A bug was found, they reported on the call, seemed to be. And so they can't, like, they could be producing it now, but because they found a bug, it's going to be delayed. Because it's going to be delayed, it's probably going to be competing with a different generation of server technology from other companies. Facing competition from ARM and AMD, it's probably not good, even though it's 35% faster. And on top of that, a coding mistake made Intel GPUs 100 times slower in ray, ray tracing. That was another thing that I acknowledged on the call. Apparently, the partners that make video cards are kind of upset because things don't perform as well, and the driver situation has been not good. Wow, that is... It's just rapid fire, right, of just bad news after bad news. It was shockingly bad news. But there was one tiny bit of good news. Intel is going to produce Taiwanese company MediaTek's chips. There was nothing substantive said here, except we are going to co commit to significant volume. And Reuters and other people sort of pressed them to say, what, what does that does that mean 10,000 wafers? 100,000 wafers? What does it mean? And uh, we got no specifics. This is Intel's foundry. This is an Intel foundry customer. So it's not that MediaTek is using Intel's technology. It's MediaTek technology and designs that are going to be produced in Intel fabrication facilities as a way to make money. So that's kind of interesting. But I don't think any money has changed hands. And this is sort of, you know. In the future. An in the future opportunity. That was like a flashback to 2017. Before we stopped letting you hold the controls. Sorry. 
<laughs> I can tell you're passionate though. I, I like the enthusiasm. It was. I mean, it's a bad like Intel. Like you want to see them innovate and do stuff, and Intel's good for competition. But good lord. Of course, I think Intel was playing games with some of the server sales and stuff, and like server sales ended abruptly. They actually, asked asked about that. It's like your guidance previously said everything was good. It's like, well, the economy meant that people stopped buying servers immediately, and we didn't anticipate that. It's like, well, I think games were being played a couple of quarters ago because things weren't great. Well, another bad thing for Intel is that, of course, a lot of their business comes from not just the CPU and certainly not from the GPU. But from the smaller chips, the little things that you can license and other people have to use yours. But maybe they've all learned their lesson. <laughs> Apple replaces the last remaining Intel made component in the M2 MacBook Air. This is something somebody spotted in the iFixit teardown, which you should go check out because the laptop is entirely battery at this point. The circuit board's tiny. It was the Thunderbolt controller. Intel's doing its own Thunderbolt now, which should only make Thunderbolt even more incompatible. This is one of my favorite paywall alternatives ever because <laughs> it's like a wordpress blog <laughs> yeah and you know it's it's like you know the original article was so much more flowery than this and this is just like you know like oh they're evil uh nikai asia finally woke up to the fact that apple's patents have pointed to a major push into autos for years so apple had their press event recently and they showed apple auto and they said hey every auto manufacturer isn't doing well gm and other companies want to work with apple but Apple wants a level of control that automotive companies are not comfortable with. But Apple is patenting everything that they do, so it's basically our way or the highway from Apple's point of view. This ain't just CarPlay. They're looking at everything down to the glass and the metal. They want to make it all. They want, they want an Apple car, and they want all of it to be Apple software. And anybody else that makes cars, they also want that to be Apple software. I think they've scaled back the... Uh ambitions for self-driving apple's new car software could be a trojan horse into the automotive industry and the automotive industry knows it and they're being super cautious dealing with apple because well apple has a history for these things see also what they did to qualcomm i think they did qualcomm real dirty i'm imagining an apple car that made their own metal and glass and then thinking about every time someone drops an iphone and it shatters immediately <laughs> like, uh, do we want a car made out of that glass fingerprints all over the windshield yeah <laughs> Yeah, they uh, they definitely point out, you know, the, the dangers of that, you know, of letting Apple do everything. Because one of the things that seemed to really pique their interest was this whole BMW subscription model. Yeah. Ugh. Apple was like, oh, we like that. <laughs> Every day we get closer to the reality 4chan described and I can't. <laughs> so uh, once again, 4chan was right. <laughs> CarPlay, CarPlay could become the walled garden. Yeah. Oh, what if we get to a place that's like, well, you can't take this exit because you don't have CarPlay. This is this exit is just it's, for CarPlay. It's play. a fast pass, but yeah. oh. <laughs> level one predicts someone clip this and then in like five to ten years when that starts happening, we finally get the infrastructure built through, but it's for this. <laughs> We're going to rebuild the highways, but only for people that have Apple, Apple CarPlay. <laughs> But listen, we got to stop. I really, really need to pee. Oh, is that an Apple Bucky's or an Android Bucky's? Oh, my oh, I don't gosh. know. They'll lobby for that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Lord. The darkest timeline. Ugh. But they don't have a lot of new hardware, right? The car maybe is the most exciting thing they've got going on because they're just iterating with everything else. However, maybe the new watch will excite you. Apple reportedly planning a high end watch with a new design and a bigger screen. That's what I want. And on then my wrist. there's nothing like this. Don't even. This picture's made up. I hate that seven. Krista, that seven. Oh, sorry, I hit the mic. I can't hardly see it. It's, it's right here. It's Ew. Like Torture. Those are numbers? <laughs> yeah. Ew. It's, uh, it's, would you say that it's lying flat? All of them are. <laughs> oh my gosh. They need a new designer. Fire that person immediately. Well, they fired Johnny Ive. That's surprising. They fired Johnny Ive and then everybody's saying, wow, all these ports in the new Mac Studio because it's got SD and USB and Thunderbolt and everybody seems happy that it's got all the ports. Well, when it comes to the video card war, what if they offer some stuff other than video? NVIDIA has got RTX voice and people are raving about that. It seems to do an incredible job of just filtering out everything except your voice. So Team Red, what are they going to do? AMD just leaked its NVIDIA RTX voice competitor in a now deleted video, although I think the video has since been posted. Yeah, this is old from the 22nd. This is the 22nd. You, you can yeah. download it now and play with it. It actually works pretty well. Um, it seems to have trouble filtering out the Model M 
keyboard when I'm talking, but it does a good job filtering it out when I'm not talking. That's interesting because that was one of the use cases they said that uh, RTX excelled at. Yeah, it. Uh, I mean, maybe it's just because of the, the distinct sound of the Model N. I don't know. They're going to have to rent Scott Watson's amazing keyboard collection and train it on that. Well, uh, the wall garden is suffering some blows. There are some bricks <laughs> definitely falling out of the wall garden and some people peeking through. Netflix dodges the App Store tax with a new external sign-up page on iOS. Now, I think this is wrong. And this is really interesting. So with Netflix, you can go externally and log in and it'll use your existing Netflix account. It doesn't. It's not through the Apple Pay or anything like that. And so they're not offering you a way to go through Apple anymore. You can just do it directly through a browser. But if you read carefully in the the lawsuits, Apple has always said, we still get a cut. It's like 27%. If you're going to do your own payment processor, you know, we'll take 3% off, but we still want our 27%. And so all those EU cases where Apple is permitting third-party payment processors, they still want 27%. I'm pretty sure we're going to have another article in the future about Apple and Netflix locked in battle because Netflix uh, is having to pay, just write Apple a check. It's like, okay, you're taking money for subscribers on our platform. We're going to block your app. You're not going to be able to distribute your app in our app store unless you give us our fee for supporting your app on our infrastructure. But could they wouldn't they have to prove that they would not have signed up for Netflix if they couldn't get it on Apple rather than signed up for Netflix some other way and just happen to use it on their phone. Apple controlling the App Store is going to inject stuff into their phone. And so it's like, here is somebody using their Apple device to enjoy Netflix. We know exactly who they are. You owe us money for them. But they could also, like, you could have, it's like, well, the day before that I was on my uh, computer looking, and then the day before that I was on my TV. Apple still wants Why their 27%. Otherwise, you can't have the app. That's that's what they've said, at least in the in the Epic lawsuit and everything else. Is like if your if your app's completely free, it's fine. But if you get money from subscribers, we are owed some of that money. That's their position. Do you think the uh, the Netflix legal team like they saw the the job cuts and the the earnings report and they were like, oh, let's do something. And they're like, oh yeah, go ahead and do that. We don't have to worry about Apple anymore. Knowing <laughs> that that lawsuit is coming, it's like job security. And the design team was like, you know, I've just been sitting on my hands for six months. So, you know, whatever, I'll design a login screen. Uh, and uh, Google, the big story of when did this happen? Was this like 2021, 2020 when they announced that? It's, it's been, been a while. while. Yeah. They met overwhelming pushback because the business model of so many websites was attacked by this. It seems to be still the case. Google delays when Chrome will phase out third-party cookies to 2024. Now, remember when Apple was doing their thing with the whole privacy flag thing, Google was sort of making some rumbles that they were going to do this immediately. And then there was a lot of pushback. The ad industry completely freaked out. And then they said, well, you know what, 2024. But this is the first time they've actually said 2024, like they pushed it that far back. But it's, it's interesting, I think. Pro user, so of course we can't do it. Can't be done. Can I just preemptively opt into this right now? No. Now we heard uh, a couple weeks ago about Google Maps, and we find out that the youth don't know about Google Maps, or at least they don't care. They go to TikTok for their map needs, which makes which no sense. Strange. But Google probably had a meeting, and they're like, "How can we make maps more like TikTok?" <laughs> Google is adding flyover-like aerial views to maps. This is of landmarks. They've got an animated GIF that uh, has some stuff. I assume this is more like, this seems like a strange feature to me because I think you would use TikTok more as like, my favorite influencer or my best friend went to this new restaurant downtown. That's how they find it. Yeah. Not, I'm looking at an actual map or aerial view of a city. This will be great when you're working in the hive city and they stop letting you leave. Mm. So you can virtually explore the rest of the world. <laughs> How long before somewhere like uh, Big Ben or Rikers Island says no photography because we're losing people that actually want to come here? <laughs> Shooting down drones. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, 
Rockstar, they've been printing money off of that same game for, for like 10 years. A yeah. long time now. Doing a good job of it, too. People yeah. really like to play it. It is impressive. As, as horrible as the business model is, people keep doing it. And as horrible as the game performance is. Yeah. You'd think after 10 years the game would run faster, but it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. It's all that, pro- that JSON. Oh, my God. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, the next iteration, we don't know what the load times will be. But we know some other details. Grand Theft Auto 6 will star a female play, uh, playable character, according to a report. And then there's also some talk about cultural shifts and blah, 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 and I don't even care. Yeah, why is this even a story? Because it's like, you know, they're, they're doing the woke, the ESG thing here. <laughs> a female like, character is not really a big deal. I like, like. The, I like the memes around this where it's like, you know, the young punk kid, and it's like, Grand Theft Auto 5, this is amazing. And then uh, they've got the existential crisis old man, you know, the, 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 I can't remember what the name of the meme is, but the one where he's like, Harold. <laughs> Harold, oh, yeah. yeah. And so Harold has got his headset on and he's like, I'm finally ready to play Grand Theft Auto 6. And it's, it's Harold. Uh, <laughs> millions of years later. I think probably why it matters, like why the female character is so important is because until this point, every Grand Theft Auto has been like hooker killing male power fantasy. Mm. Mm. And they're trying to get away from that because that's really toxic right now. People, you know, like, it's not. It'd be What's interesting to see toxic? it. Yeah, I'm kind of interested to see if it'll go the other way. Can you kill well, male hookers? I think in GTA 3, it, people loved it. Like it was revolutionary, and it was like, oh my god, we can kill hookers. You, know? <laughs> you can kill everybody in GTA. It's it's not just that. It's going to be a footnote in a history book. And the state of the art of the technology was judged on whether or not you could kill the non-player characters in the game. That's kind of the joy of the game. Like it's supposed to be kind of goofy like that. You know what though, in the modern, like world that we live in, killing a male hooker because of the the brass tax of male prostitution would be more outrageous, right? Yeah. Because protected group. Mm-hmm. And then does the AI respond to that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that'll be a plot point in, in the thing. Could you learn from that though? Like, if you started doing like racially motivated things, and then the racist police force is like, "Yeah, we're gonna look the other way. Good job." And like the AI was, I mean, that would be great. That would, there's a game right there. I never played the story mode. I always just played multiplayer GTA because I liked the absurdity of like running into other players on the server. I put a lot of work in the story. I mean, it was kind of clever at times, but uh, I, felt I didn't like, care about it at all. Yeah, there was a lot of grind in that game. I remember when we did the. What is it? The the bigger quests where you'd have like the setup, the heists, and they would just sit there and talk at you about all the story. And I was like, I don't uh, care about this. I'm so, just here to shoot guns and drive cars. And we weren't great at it. And that every time you had to hear the talking, that yeah, was frustrating. <laughs> it was really frustrating. I hope that that's what I hope they get rid of for GTA Six. Oh, no. I don't care about your story at all. I'm not here for the narrative. They just announced that they're going to focus more on the story because these characters are going to be. See, that was one of the timeless and brilliant things about the Half Life. It's like your character never said anything. You just That's sort all of, Valve games. Like the, yeah. I mean, except for maybe Left 4 Dead. But like even Left 4 Dead, you don't know a whole lot about who you're playing. You just sort of figure it out as you play, and that's good. Emergent, emergent huh. storytelling. Actually, no, that's not at all emergent storytelling. That's no, pure scripted, yeah, linear stuff. But it lets you as the player kind of piece it uh, together and well and you can inhabit the character more instead of feeling like you're playing a particular person <laughs> definitely not the gta method well we'll talk a little bit more about uh, spacex later on in the space section but this is definitely in response to spacex two of europe's biggest internet satellite companies are merging to take on starlink one web and what was the other one you uh, you uh, Udl, Udl Udl Sat. Sat? That's Udl. a terrible name, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, I don't think this will really work out for them. Until Starlink came along, there were these two satellite companies that launched satellites in what feels like the 80s. And they never launched any more satellites. And then all of a sudden we've got new modern, you know, 2021 model satellites that are launched. And holy crap, they're faster and better and people aren't suffering. Because before, with the satellite companies you had a captive audience because you would buy literally anything else if you could other than satellite and now satellites actually a reasonable alternative to crappy country dsl sure it's not like going to compete with modern infrastructure and you know even a small town of like ten thousand should have better infrastructure than 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 you can get from satellite 
but uh being able to pay something like your electric bill without spending half an afternoon on it exactly and so these these companies this is they've made their own bed here they didn't invest in their infrastructure their satellites suck just like viasat i think viasat satellites suck and um yeah this is where we are it's tough in the satellite game because if you come first your product's always going to be worse yeah not that i'm saying they did anything right but look at what Starlink is doing. They're already on Gen 2 of their satellites because they know that Gen 1 is not going to be good enough forever. So let's apply that same template of you had a product, people had no alternative for some reason, and then during that time you did nothing. And at the end of it, when people got alternatives, what happens? <laughs> Shopify's pandemic boom is finally over. Here's how the e-commerce company is reinventing itself. They're, they're laying off a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, the reinvention yeah. seems to be cut hard. <laughs> cut the fat. Every Shopify site gets a, a cut as well. It's amazing that they're still losing money, I guess. Yeah. I think they counted on things just continuing. Yeah. They didn't, Continu continuing to grow like a cancer. They didn't plan for people getting out of their homes. I think also um, we'll have another story later about, uh, or maybe maybe this is we had that in the business section when where senators were investigating uh, credit card fees. We had that story. I thought like the fee hikes. Uh, Was that is that coming up? I might have I might have misclicked that or something. Um, but uh, you know, some senators are saying, "Hey, credit card companies are charging an awful lot of money percentage wise." That was also Shopify's model, and it turns out that's kind of unsustainable, especially during an economic downturn, because it doesn't cost that much. The only reason that it is that way is because of regulatory capture making things like PCI compliance really hard. But you notice companies like Equifax aren't even, like, they're doing at least 100 things that would immediately fail you as a small business for PCI compliance and data handling. Um but somehow it's fine if you're not, you know, a mom and pop shop. So Shopify takes some of the headache, that headache away from you, but they charge disproportionately for it. And three hours capital, they're done. Mm. They're done, done. They're gone. Now their leaders had been in hiding, but they've crawled out from under their rock and they have sheepishly granted some interviews <laughs> and admitted what happened. Three arrows capital founders cite three key crypto trades that blew up the firm. So the postmortem here is pretty interesting. They uh, one of the one of the farms that they bet on, they bet the farm on, was uh, that a stable coin would in fact be stable forever, and that was not true. Uh, they were big into Terra, that hurt them pretty bad, and Ethereum. They had their uh, Ethereum uh, staked. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Oops. And once again, we have just replaced the name of the big tech company. Although this is more than tech, but this is media, yeah. mostly tech. And uh, what are they doing? Well, they're not hiring, that's for sure. Vox Media cuts staff and slows down hiring as recession fears grow. Well, but we're in the second quarter with negative growth. It was minus 9%. I'm pretty sure, unless we're moving the goalposts here. Don't say the R word. <laughs> it's the opposite of a procession. And this story w sort of uh, immediately rolls out, not just like, I think philosophically we all know that the subscription-based model is awful. Yes. But this points out ways that it's awful that you didn't even think about. Right. A Tesla locks 80 miles of a customer's battery range for a $4,500 ransom. So what happened was there was a Tesla that had uh, was sold with a smaller battery pack. The battery pack malfunctioned. They didn't have the correct size in stock, so they replaced the battery pack. And this was years ago. This was a larger battery pack. With a larger battery pack, because the small one wasn't in there. And then so they left, the, the range was unlocked. They could use the full capacity of the smaller battery pack. The car changed hands twice since then. The new owner bought it with the larger battery pack. And Tesla, they took it in for some routine service, and Tesla said, Hey, wait a minute. This isn't supposed to have a big battery pack. And they retroactively... Software locked it. Software locked it. I'm pretty sure that's theft. Under most state laws, that would be theft. Elon Musk says no. Yeah. You did not subscribe. It's that. like, oh, you didn't buy that battery. And I was like, you gave me a substitute part. You can't deprive. That doesn't, you, it doesn't work. But the thing he went in for, 
it was even worse than that because the thing he went in for was not optional. Yeah. It had to be fixed. And it was something they screwed up. So like it was, it was like a, a recall type of situation. Yeah. So just showing up and they were like, oh, well, here's an opportunity to take $4,500 from you. Yeah. It's, Sounds like theft to me. (sighs) This is a terrifying story. And I fear that this is going to be more and more part of our lives because of the great resignation. These companies cannot find anybody to work. (laughs) And so this guy had a background. Yeah. yeah. This guy had a very checkered background. But you can tell that they were just like, we got to get somebody to do this job, right? (laughs) Charter told to pay $7.3 billion in damages after cable installer murders grandmother. And so I thought this was initially just a case of uh the jury was like oh you know this is really egregious it was a grandma blah 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 um no this was somebody that had a history of stealing credit cards and information from from houses that he was and know, getting caught doing in- thought this installation. was a good idea yeah and how much of a, a pr nightmare is this it was his day off but he was able to come in use his card check out a an official charter van from the motor pool drive to her house in charter uniform, wearing charter gloves and using a charter box cutter to slit her throat. It was all charter (laughs) all the way down. It's branded. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he's been caught and they've been, they got to pay 7.3 billion. I mean, that's that's awful. It's not going to replace grandma, but it's certainly going to change the family from now on, isn't it? They're going to appeal. They're not going to pay 7.3 billion. She caught him. Yeah. Going through the purse. That's what happened. And so he was just like, well, you get the box cutter. Wow. The Communist Party continues to crack down. Now, they are having a serious economic problem in China right now. <laughs> Aren't we all? Those, no. Uh, no, there's no recession here, Wendell. <laughs> well, theirs is a little worse because they have, you know, the banks, obviously. And yeah. now they've got the real estate issue going the, on. The tofu dregs real estate where it might not even be real uh, real assets. Yeah, the people are getting a little uppity about it. And so they got to they gotta take control of something. Jack Ma to give up control of fintech giant Ant Group, according to the Wall Street Journal. He's going to step back and he's going to cede control and uh, some things are happening. Now, he still has Alibaba. He's still going to run that. But he's given up the Ant Group, which is the financial arm. He wanted to do the Apple thing where he controls all aspects. And the CCP was like, bro, we do that. Come on. (laughs) What are you new here? You can't step on that. Oh, here we go. This was just a, well, I don't know why I put this in business, honestly. Senate bill takes aim at Visa and MasterCard's rising credit card fees for merchants. So this is the Market Watch article I was talking about before. This is set off in part, not just by Visa and MasterCard, but by companies like Shopify, which also tack on a percentage. So if Visa and MasterCard charge you, you know, one and a half is what it used to be, two and a half, three percent. And then Shopify is like, oh, we'll take our three percent. Or PayPal is even more egregious than that. Um, it can turn, turn pretty dark pretty fast. And so this Senate bill is like, well this seems a little excessive it seems like the the cost of technology forces this cost down doesn't it cost less per transaction now and the answer is uh yeah but you would think that it would just be an economy of scale right like if we could lower that if we could do one cent but get way more transactions that would be better but apparently not because american express yeah if you go into a place and they're like sorry we don't take american express the reason is because their fee is ridiculous yeah and i think they make you really kowtow to their telemetry to prove there's no fraud a lot of these credit card companies also in the beginning to get more traction they had this sort of quasi pyramid scheme where you could charge a fixed fee per transaction plus a percentage the percentage of course went to the the credit card processing network but the fixed fee always went to the reseller that sold things and you get into these weird situations where it's like there's a 25 cent transaction fee and like five cents would go to you and then 10 cents to your, you know, your next upstream person in the pyramid. And then another 10 cents to the, the next two upstream people in the pyramid beyond that. So it's really just bizarre, like crazy things that probably should have been investigated before now. Also, if you have good enough credit, like I have a, a credit card that's 2% back and one that's five in certain situations. So it really is that sliding scale of let's punish the poor people the most because yeah. Yeah. we'll never give them this card. We'll give you two of those percentage points back, but not the poor's. I think that's actually a trap to, for people that are less wealthy than they realize in order to get the interest fees. I saw a headline, I think it was last week, that said that 20% of people 
are now no longer looking at their credit card balance because they're afraid of it. Because <laughs> of the downturn. In these I mean, uncertain times, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I, I understand the anxiety, maybe better than most, but like... <laughs> well, that's like opening up your bathroom door and seeing a fire and just closing it. And be like, no. I don't, don't want to deal with that. Yeah. Or, you know, going up to a cheese counter and the guy talks to you when you don't expect it and you run away. You just avoid the cheese counter. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, but the cheese counter guy is not going to show up at your house and take your car. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, he might if you have a Hyundai. Now, here we have two stories from two different countries, but doing the same thing. Now, we talked about uh, New Orleans re-embracing the AI face recognition policing. Why are they doing that? Because overwhelming crime statistics. <laughs> that is the same reason these people are doing this. Orwellian facial recognition cameras in the UK uh, stores, uh, they've been challenged by rights groups. Like, hey, we're just going to store everything. If we get your face, you know, we get your face. It's fine. And it's because crime is going up kind of a lot. It definitely doesn't have anything to do with the economy and the squeeze that people feel at the uh, the checkout. But hey, you know, whatever. They didn't name the, we got paywalled here, but they didn't name the chain. It's just a supermarket chain. I don't, I don't know if they named it later in the story. But this is not the official UK street cameras that the government runs. No, this is a private company mm -hmm. that's doing that. So, like, do you think you walk into your favorite grocery store and... They're literally tracking every move you make and know who you are. I think eventually they're like if the economy continues on this trajectory, it's literally going to be an airlock system where you go in and it's like, oh, yeah, you're welcome here because you're not an undesirable. Ugh. So that right now what they have, they describe is it's if you come in there and you're on the blacklist, then they immediately deploy the loss prevention team yeah. to hustle you on out of there. Now, we don't know who did it in the UK, but we do know one company that's doing it and that's Kmart. <laughs> Kmart halts the use of the in-store facial recognition amid Australian privacy investigation. I didn't know Kmart was still a thing anywhere. Well, we don't even Australia. have them here. Yeah. yeah. Turns out this was this is all to do with loss prevention. Turns out that there are some people that are surviving by just carrying stuff away from Kmart. Or making a living, which is probably not good. The Kmart that wasn't far from here, it's closed. It's been closed for years now, but it was like a pocket dimension for years. You'd go in there and it felt like you were back in like 1998. <laughs> it's very strange. Wired is now doing a paywall? Oh, for wow. God's sake. I thought they were good. They were for a long time. Summer sale. Reload. Disgusting. Reload the page. Let's see what happens if we reload the page. Hey. Oh, it came back. It probably pops up after 15 seconds. So quickly. Oh, oh no. no. Right, here, we, here we go. You got five <laughs> seconds. The unsolved mystery attack on internet cables in Paris is brought to us by Wired and their paywall. Hey. Uh, so it turns out somebody was messing with the undersea cables. And we don't know who or why or what, but some clues have emerged. That uh, happened back in, what, February with Norway? Mm -hmm. So it turns out there's a little bit of slack in these uh, conduits because they expect this kind of thing. And then it's like, oh, we'll just splice it right back together. We can do that on location. These people clearly knew how that worked and they cut it in such a way that it couldn't be put to get back together without bringing in another piece. So they wanted maximum downtime, it seems. The, the one that happened in Norway was speculated to be related to Russia because there were Russian ships in the vicinity at the time. This was also three or four Separate locations, all at once, perfectly coordinated. Yeah. Wow. We, we also found the uh, the yacht that belonged to a Russian billionaire that had all kinds of equipment on board for doing exactly this kind of work. The smoking circular saw. <laughs> <laughs> he just throws it overboard. <laughs> it wasn't me, sir. Uh, oh, and that began the security section. Well, actually, the, the no, you know what? That was I thought that was a beautiful transition from AI into security. Mm. Uh, oh, but it wasn't AI. It wasn't it was AI. Business. It, was a, it was business. It's I'm fine. a failure. Uh, but we do have a new kind of malware. A newly discovered malware hijacks Facebook business accounts. So this is basically a Trojan that watches your computer, but even if you're protected by two-factor, as you type in the two-factor response from your phone, it's compromised enough that uh, it can still take over your Facebook business page. But it's specifically targeting Facebook business pages. They think it's purely financially motivated from some dude in the Philippines. And how do they get you? LinkedIn phishing. Oh. The same old story, that LinkedIn phishing. Boy, they use that a lot. And another kind of malware. And the unfortunate thing about this one is that they're now giving it away for free. Source code for Rust-based info stealer released on hacker forums. 
Turns out Rust is the ideal language for writing malware because it's so tiny and efficient. Look at the little anime character. What a beautiful interface. We'll probably have another story next week. Uh, turns out EFI rootkits have been around far longer than we realize as well. And they're, you know, they're maybe well written. I left that one out because they didn't have a ton of stuff except for just like... DEF CON. This is happening a lot. It's going to come out in DEF CON. And it's hard to detect. But they didn't have any brass tacks. I think that. there's going to be a presentation at DEF CON, but we'll see. But this looks for uh, cryptocurrency. It looks for password manager stuff. It looks for all kinds of stuff in your browser. And it gets it. Yeah. Don't click those links. Unless it's the one tab from our readme, which we definitely don't put malicious links in. This is the most clickbait headline ever for such something that's so stupid. Yeah, this one uh, definitely didn't turn out to be much. Uh, basically, what they did is they put a throttle on the login. Yeah. They put a, a, a flood control. The real question is, how many years have we been using this software? Yeah, yeah. Windows 11 is getting a new block, a new security setting to block ransomware attacks. Uh, the setting's always been there. It's just off by default. Now it's going to be on by default. It's remote desktop. It has to do with remote desktop. Remote desktop is off by default. But when you turn it on, it's so stupid because it doesn't log login failures and it doesn't throttle login failures. So guess what? You can just brute force that thing for years if you have to. And eventually you'll, you'll find an account that works. They're going to make it to where... If you're brute forcing it, it'll just always tell you that it doesn't work, even even if it would. That's it. That's the change. That is going to make it more annoying when your password times out and you have to try to reset it remotely. I can't wait to check and see if the failed things are logged because they're not logged by default. When you fail to log into remote desktop, it doesn't log that. How stupid is that? Well, it's almost as stupid as social media companies telling you that you can definitely give them your information and they'll protect it. <laughs> Twitter data breach exposes contact details for 5.4 million accounts on sale for $30,000. Seems astoundingly low. <laughs> well, the, the attacker's hoping to sell it multiple times. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Twitter will probably buy it themselves once just to see if it's legit. Uh, Google's going to buy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Microsoft's going to buy it. Every major ad agency, probably. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, the ad agency angle. Uh, it's like, where, you, where else could you buy a list of 5.4 million people for 30K? I mean, psh, it's a no brainer. All their interests? Man, fantastic. I know exactly who to market to. The CCP is probably going to get seven or eight copies. <laughs> and it's been a, a little while since we've seen a big story about small town ransomware, but this one seems pretty bad. A small Canadian town is being extorted by a global ransomware gang. Their stuff got encrypted. The water supply is still working because it was air-gapped. A couple other things are still working, but otherwise, city services are down. Payroll is down. A lot of things are down. Whoever designed that water system is probably getting a raise now. <laughs> well, hopefully they didn't connect the water system yeah, it's directly just, to the... Yeah. It's yeah. probably not tracking things properly. The billing system's probably down, but everything else is fine. And uh, another week, another blockchain. Guess what happened to it? Titanium blockchain CEO pleads guilty to $21 million in crypto fundraising scam. I'd like to make a note here that we didn't need any of the invasive law enforcement stuff. Just good old-fashioned law enforcement without any of the spyware on your phone was necessary in order to find all the stuff that this guy did, which was basically fraud, and track him down. It didn't didn't need anything. Didn't need to do anything crazy than we already have. Well, he wasn't exactly Lex Luthor. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, it's <laughs> a crypto bro. Come on. He didn't. He didn't try too hard. To, maybe he tried, but he failed to hide his. His horribleness. And this one may be not malicious, but uh, another exploit. Solana DeFi protocol Nirvana drained of liquidity after flashed loan exploit. The price of the protocol's ANA token fell almost 80% following the attack. You know, they talk about that whole greater fool theory. Yeah. Who is investing in these things still? <sighs> Lots of people. Oh. Enough that this is happening still. So. Lots of fools. Once again, we have an article where you just replace the company name because we heard this last week from Amazon. Uh, an article where we plug our own home server series. Google's Nest will provide data to police without a warrant. You know what doesn't provide data to police without a warrant? Literally anything we show you how to build here at level one. We've got so many videos on building your own home surveillance system, your own home security system, your own home NAS. You should not be using any of this garbage. So 
They say that it's going to be emergency situations if we reasonably believe that we can prevent someone from dying or from suffering serious physical harm. Which, that's what they always say. It's pretty easy, I think, for the cops to just be like, oh, yeah, that's definitely happening. Yeah, yeah definitely. Oh, okay. Active shooter. Give it to me. So, if you ran out last week and ripped off your ring doorbell and replaced it with, with a the nest. Google Nest. Oh, come on. I don't think our audience is that dumb. That would be so funny. <sighs> Surely Google will protect my data. Yeah, exactly. I can trust them more than Amazon. Remember that quote from the UK? It's like, oh, it's just a simple matter to add another person to the conversation for law enforcement. And that's no yeah. different than alligator clips that we used to. <laughs> Look, we're already doing this. Just make it easier for us. <sighs> All right. Well, that was depressing. How long did that one go? Oh, we got through that pretty, pretty quick, actually. Well, there was minutes. there was a section that was like rapid fire, bad news, bad news, bad news. What, was there any good news? Engagement challenge? <laughs> <laughs> no, no one we know was hurt in the floods. That's good news. Yet. Yeah, We, we haven't know. heard from everybody We don't yet. have a full accounting yeah. from the floods. As of the recording of this, so... Bye. A lot of nonsense on Friday.